Okay. So the class is being recorded. So, uh, um, like I said, this is uh, our um, any first revision class. We intend to have a number of revision classes, and this happens to be the first one. Um, before um, I started the recording, uh, I was talking about our plan, our uh, our revision plan, and I said um, it shouldn't be one um, class where we finish everything or we um, um, try to finish everything because uh, the material is overwhelming in terms of chapters and in terms of ideas and issues. So uh, our plan would be to divide the revision into uh, perhaps smaller chunks where uh, every time we meet, we finish a chapter or two. Okay, and before we um, do that, and prior to the revision class, I would send you the link or links of um, the, um, the videos uh, on this or that chapter where you can always uh, listen and take down notes perhaps. Uh, you can also read uh, material from the book or from any other source for that matter. So that when, when you come, you have ideas that you can share. And by sharing, of course, the ideas are, are going to be reinforced in, into your mind. So you wouldn't have a problem when you go to the exam. Okay. Uh, and like I said, um, on the sidelines of the revision class or classes that we will have, we will do a bit of critiquing of the TMAs that we have uh, taken. I'll be highlighting, uh, you know, um, where we uh, went wrong and ways as how we can uh, uh, perhaps uh, correct uh, those errors. Uh, like I said, um, uh, most of the errors uh, have to do with the idea of text uh, appropriation. Text appropriation means that you are um, mm, you're not you're not you, you perhaps you don't understand uh, what text uh, appropriation means in terms of the bad practices when it comes to quoting stuff as is and this. Uh, stuff that you're quoting is so big that at the end uh, of the TMA, you don't feel that you are reading stuff written by a student. Mm -hmm. uh, you're reading stuff written by somebody else. So this is falling into the trap of plagiarism, like uh, I said. And uh, we'll, um, during the revision classes, we, we will uh, think uh, of ways as how we can avoid that, inshallah. Um, okay, so uh, what is it that we're going to do today? We're going to uh, talk about Kilowatt. This is going to be our first leg on this uh, long journey, long revision journey. Um, okay, so Kilowatt, like I said, you guys by now you have all. The, the knowledge and the information there is about Kiyobatra and of course the other chapters. Given the fact that you have gone through um, six quizzes that talk about just that and you have also gone through a TMA, you have written a TMA on these different chapters. So your knowledge in terms of um, perhaps size, uh, is as big as mine, and perhaps it is bigger than mine, given the fact that you have you you have to prepare so many times, and I didn't have to prepare. I didn't have exams. I only say the the thing one once or twice, okay? But you've been engaged uh, engaging with the material for quite some time. And I think you became experts on, on Kiribatra, on Marlu, on Cezanne, and all the other uh, people that we have taken. 
Okay. So when um, okay, I also um, spoke about the idea that we need the class to be more of a, um, a round table, if you like, where everybody is contributing in. I don't want to go uh, like it did with the normal or the regular classes where I say everything and I monopolize the talk and you only listen, right? You have listened enough, right? So it's time that you spell it out, that you talk, that you contribute input and say whatever you have in mind about the chapter or the chapters that we're dealing with, okay? So let's do it. Kiliobatra. So when I say Kiliobatra, okay, what comes to your mind? What immediately comes to your mind? Okay, if you if you would like to contribute input, uh, please raise your hand, and uh, I can always allow you to do. Okay. So uh, when I say Kiliobatra, um, what associations do you have of the name of the lady? Okay, Dana is so, so let me would like to contribute. Okay, go ahead, Dana. The word that associates to, for me to when it comes to Kilopatra is actually um sense of self. Can you, okay. mm -hmm. can, uh, can you raise your voice a little bit? Uh like the word that associates heard to me is actually um sense of self, uh seductress, temptress, uh luxury. Or mm -hmm. even, but but you you know something. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Yeah, Dana, Dana. You know something. These were the impressions that you have, you have had or you had of her when you first started. Remember, we have spoken long and enough about her. This didn't change. Is it that? Yeah. Go yeah. ahead. Um. I, I would, uh, even after I know that actually the Roman were more biased, to me, I still like the idea that she was still a Pimpetel because she was powerful and she did um, uh, order an army at the age of 21 and she was very sophisticated. She was the one who actually speaks Egyptian. So she was powerful in, in her own right, in my humble opinion. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. I mean, we shouldn't be subscribing to what... Uh, I mean, the media or, or, or even the Romans said about her because obviously it was all negative, right? Yeah. It was all stereotypical. When you put somebody in a mold and you don't want to change your mind about him, no matter uh, how hard he or she tries to change or to challenge the image that you have of him, right? But I do believe that um, because I do like, I do admire powerful women. So the idea that she, in in her own right, by calling her femme fatale, it's actually kind of made her more stronger in modern times. So that's kind of worked for her, even yeah. though it was against her. It's kind of come off more of a, a positive connotation, in my opinion. Okay, uh, and this is what you you had in mind before we walked into class and spoke about uh, this her. Is after. Uh, this is after, after you, you have read the chapter, after we have debated the images and the st stereotypical attitudes that people had of her and her uh, yeah. uh, government and all these kinds of things, right? Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, Yadana. Uh, can we have somebody else? Perhaps you need to raise your voice, uh, your, your hand, I'm sorry. Um, so who else? Raida uh, Sulaiman, go ahead. Yes. Um, uh, intelligence and um, history. I feel when uh, I listen to Cleopatra, um, all the points I have I've been uh, read, I see she is an um, intelligent person, uh, mm -hmm. strongly intelligent person, and. Uh, uh, who's uh, don't give up uh, easily, you know? Okay. Which, uh, what, which, what the, the, the Romans didn't think of when, when they portrayed her in, in the different uh, records, we, we, we haven't seen that reflected in, in the records. The focus was on 
uh, perhaps negative, the negative aspects of Kiribati from their own uh, point of view, of course. Right? Let's talk about the Romans and how they saw Cleopatra, and let's talk about the sources that we have of the Romans. And that will bring us to the idea of uh, primary sources and secondary sources. And I know that you guys are hooked <laughs> on, 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 on the difference between the two. Every time uh, I hear you talk in the group or I see you, uh, you know, um, uh, contributing input on the WhatsApp group, you talk about uh, primary and secondary sources, as if Cleopatra is only and exclusively about primary and secondary sources. I mean, the definition and what they mean. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the Roman sources um, when it comes, of course, to the character of Cleopatra and how they they saw uh, and perceived Cleopatra. Can somebody uh, highlight that aspect of the chapter? Hello. So did you mean to talk about the Roman perspective and their sources? Yes, yes, Salma. Salma, El, Salma what? A Shia. Okay, Salma. Go ahead. Uh, there's actually three sources for the Roman. Uh, Starting with the Octavian speech uh, by the historical uh, Cassius Dio and his image of uh, Antony and the effect that Cleopatra had over him. And the second one is the Lutar, Antony, and as, uh, and 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 this uh, uh, it's not like uh, the event that happened during uh, that time is actually the it's considered to be the function and the fundamental uh, sources for that event. Uh, did you, did you talk about Horus and his uh, poem? Yes, yes, actually, okay. yes. Yes, mm. that's one. Okay. Uh, um, so let, let's let's talk. I mean, I'm sorry, you forgot. You know, uh, Salma. Can can we talk about uh, the overall assessment, uh, the overall Roman assessment of the character and the government of Cleopatra? She's a, a bad influence. To make uh, yes. Okay. Can can you elaborate on that, Salma? By elaborate, uh, I mean, elaborate and illustrate, give examples. Like uh, uh, when they describe her as a, uh, when they describe Antony as a shadow to Cleopatra, and he mm -hmm. has uh, no uh, power over his mm -hmm. uh, actions and behave, and the person he really became, and how he not like he lose his uh, masculinity, mm -hmm. but like he's become more lower than uh, a man. Remember be. that at one point he was referred to as an uh, as effeminate. Effeminate, yes. Yeah, effeminate means woman-like. Uh, with all due yes, respect to women, like. this is how. Yeah, we're talking yes. about a male-dominated uh, society. Yes. Uh, where uh, if you refer to a man as a woman, that would be bad and everything. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and how he also uh, bewitches by her. Ah, yes. And the aspect of bewitching and witchcraft, the fact that she was uh, practicing magic and she was exercising yes. witchcraft on him. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, Salma. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Can we have... Um, we're not done with the Roman sources, as a matter of fact, because of how rich those uh, negative Roman sources were. Can we have somebody else perhaps pick up what uh, Salma left over in terms of ideas about Roman sources? Hello? Again, we uh, were not done with uh, Roman sources because of um, how rich the material is, uh, of course, in a negative way. Uh, we need somebody to perhaps elaborate on what Salma has been, expand on what Salma has been saying. 
Um, let's talk about the different sources that we have. One, one of them happens to be a poem by Horace. Um, the other would be a biography written um, by Plutarch on, uh, on Antony. Uh, a third would be the, the speech by Octavian in which he would, uh, of course, uh, uh, talk about um, uh, Antony and, and, and the, uh, the bad influence that Cleopatra has uh, on him, right? Um, what else? Can we talk about that? Can we have specific examples to show how negative uh, those sources were when it comes to the character of Kiriwatra? Should I continue with, with the last source? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. It's about the Octavian poetry and how they actually described Egypt as a barbarian. Yeah. Uh, yeah towards the Roman. Yeah, well, which is obviously unfair, right? Unfair, it's totally unfair. You know, to, to talk about culture. an entire culture. Yes. To, right, and this is uh, very, uh, this is not very objective, right? It's not negative to be saying that no. to, yes. Mm. Uh, okay, any uh, other ideas? And so this, also, Go ahead. she also be considered as a witch again uh, and a monster. Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting, Selma. Selma, which branch are you in? Are you in Riyadh or in? I am in Riyadh, actually. Yeah. Riyadh. Riyadh. Yeah. Yes. Riyadh. Mashallah, your English is excellent. Your turn of phrase is equally excellent, and Mashallah, you have a big mind. Thank Where you. have you been? Okay. Where have you been? Where have you been, Adinti? Uh, where have I been? Where? <laughs> ah, I mean, uh, you never contribute, you never talk, right? Yes. Mm, okay. A few times. Actually, but you're, you're doing an excellent job. God Thank bless you. you and your parents. I'm to so honest, proud. I... Thank you, but to be honest, I did not get pretty well in the team. <laughs> Yeah, man, this is, uh, yeah, I remember that you spoke to me a number of times, yes. asked uh, perhaps about feedback. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you write as well as you speak, you could have taken 20 out of 20. Oh, I, I don't know what happens. <laughs> but you I still have, the final. inshallah, inshallah, you'll do an excellent job. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, and the, the, um, we also had a lady before Salma. Right, what, what, what was the name? I'm sorry, uh, Dana. Dana, 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 what? Uh, Dana Salimi, and Salimi, okay. So, Dana, are you also in Riyadh? Uh, no, I'm from Jeddah, okay. So, Dana is from Jeddah. Or bad, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Dana. You did a nice job. Yeah, can we finish what we're saying and then I'll allow you to speak. Uh, let me thank Dana for her input. It was also very um, interesting and very uh, thought provoking. Thank you, Dana, so much. Okay, so somebody was. Um, uh, perhaps uh, trying to ask a question. Go ahead. Yes, doctor. Just I want to say uh, the Cassius Dio is not from the source. Which? What's your name first? Razan. Gazan. Razan. Not Razan. Uh, uh, okay. Not not Gazan, right? <laughs> Just Gazan. kidding. <laughs> okay, Razan. So your question is about uh, Cassio Deo, right? Yeah, Cassio Deo is a writer's speech. It's not from the source. No, it is a source. Actually, uh, he is the one who uh, said that Octavian came up with a speech. This is a primary source. So when I when yeah. when we talk about the the speech of Octavian, we're talking about uh, Cassius Deo, by the way. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, remember when we spoke about the idea that we're not sure whether um, Cassius Dio is truthful and honest or not because of uh, um, the fact that um, I mean he wrote or, or he uh, he said that he kind of uh, found the letter uh, 200 years after the events took place. Uh, uh, I think 200 or 300 years after. Yeah, yeah, 200. Now, Yes, and uh, whenever we have that distance, this historic distance between the event and the writing about the event, we have to take whatever uh, is presented with a grain of salt. We shouldn't take it for granted, and uh, especially if it has negative opinions and negative views. We have to challenge the views. We have to uh, uh, you know, kind of and make sure that this actually happened. I mean, the events that he spoke about and also the opinions that Octavian had of Cleopatra and uh, Antony, right? So again, that would bring us to the idea of sources, the idea that you shouldn't take sources for granted. You shouldn't accept them at their face value. You have to challenge them. You have to uh, perhaps uh, uh, reconstruct them you, in order to, uh, uh, to make sure that whatever was uh, said about this or that person was correct and was given and said in good faith. No prejudice, no bias, no hidden agendas. Okay? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we're not done yet with Roman sources. If somebody else uh, would like to share something about them, go ahead. <clears throat> so Razan, where are you from? Are you from Jeddah or Medina or from uh, the Mam? From the Mam. Such. Uh, yeah. A beautiful branch. So we have Razan. Razan, what? Razan Abu Khurma. Razan. Okay, Razan. You're very active on the group, right? You're the one who is very active on the WhatsApp group, right? <laughs> Helping yes. people around. Uh, thank you for your uh, positive energy. Uh, and may God bless you, inshallah. Thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. So, Sausan, our friend, go ahead, yes, Sausan. Uh, yes. Uh, one thing um, that interests me uh, is about uh, how Kelvapatra is uh, portrayed in uh, movies as the beautiful, beautiful woman. However, in Prutrach um, biographies of uh, Mark Antony, uh, he said that she she wasn't that beautiful woman. Uh, however, her personality was incredible. Uh, yes. I think this is so, some uh, like this is confuse us because um, in in the movie she she was like the must he, he put uh, she put she was portrayed yes like beautiful woman mm -hmm. yes but uh, this was the idea so when you ask anyone about her the first thing they they uh, they uh, they think about um, about her that her pure uh, her beauty. Uh, however, we can see here in the Roman uh, uh, account. She wasn't uh, she wasn't described as a beautiful woman. Mm. So. Uh, so, uh, so the idea of her beauty. Wh why in the movies she uh, they portrayed uh, her as a beautiful woman? This is the question. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why. This is, of course, um, this is the cinema. And of course, whenever we talk about the cinema, the uh, the focus would be on the image. Um, the focus would be on, on appealing to, to people's sense of sight and also on, on the 
box office. The focus is normally on the box office, how much the, the movie will uh, bring in, I mean, uh, in terms of money and uh, financial success. Um, so presenting here as perhaps ugly uh, uh, or um, fair, to say the least, wouldn't be uh, that appealing to the audience or to you. So, so, so it's kind of, of pleasing the spectator, is that right? Yeah, that, that, uh, this is an aspect. And also the idea that we're, we're having thousands of years separating us from Kilubatra herself. And we have a great deal of talk about uh, the fact that she had uh, those relationships with three generals from the Roman Empire, when the Roman Empire was in its prime, in its heyday. So together with the strength of character, I think uh, uh, people would also, uh, uh, you know, uh, think of the idea of beauty, okay? And beauty um, is normally in the eyes of the beholder, like they say. The three leaders or the three military leaders were allied in their love for Kilopatra, right? And that cannot be without good reasons. So together with the fact that she was very powerful in terms of character, she must have had something that would attract them to her. And that would be uh, perhaps beauty in, in a special way. She has her own copyrighted uh, brand of beauty coming from the South, from Egypt, uh, and of course they have heard about Egypt a lot, ancient Egyptians, uh, ancient I mean, queens. Uh, I think uh, she, she was beautiful, but perhaps she was beautiful in her own way. Uh, and that would be one uh, reason why they got attracted uh, to and fell uh, uh, for her. I mean, I'm talking about the Roman uh, leaders. Um, again, um, coming back to the point, we're talking about the movies and we're talking about the cinema, where the focus is on the image where the focus on the idea of uh, appeal. You're trying to appeal to, uh, uh, to people's sense of, you know, seeing uh, sense of sight. And you cannot bring in a, a, a protagonist who is ugly or plain. Uh, people would shy away from watching the, the, the film and you end up losing money. Okay? Uh, you work. Um, okay, can we have somebody else? Okay. So the Roman source, uh, Rada. Okay, Rada. And then we have Hanin. We will we, we'll start with Rada. Sausan, I would like to ask you about the branch that you uh, you belong to. Uh, Riyadh. Uh, Riyadh. Riyadh. Okay. Riyadh, okay. Thank you, Samson. Uh, yeah. Yes, hi, Victor. How are yeah. you? Alhamdulillah. Who's that? Ghadi uh, Shemri from Riyadh branch. Ghadi Shemri. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, yes, I just want to ask about Ireland chapter. Like, I'm struggling with memorizing the chapter and yeah, which, which I just which uh, Ireland uh, chapter Ireland. three from book two. Okay, have have we have you ever heard me uh, speak about memorization, memorizing? Uh, uh, no. No. So have you have you memorized the other chapter so that you can memorize uh, the chapter on Ireland? Uh, yes, I uh, find the other chapters easy, but except mm -hmm. for Ireland, mm -hmm. like I have a hard time yeah. memorizing the 
Uh, I mean, I don't like the idea of memorizing because we don't ask you yeah, rather to memorize anything. Yeah, you need you to sure, understand. But I feel like I'm confused. Yeah, so but there the is obviously a difference between being... Yeah, okay. So you're... Uh, let me just uh, reassure you by saying that we don't ask you to memorize anything. We ask you to analyze. We give you a prompt, an essay prompt that is inspired by the chapter, and we ask you to write about it. Mm. Okay, write it, write about it. Uh, the material is obviously wh whatever you have studied uh, in the chapter and whatever you have assimilated and understood. And I'm saying understood, not memorized. We don't want you to memorize anything. Okay, we don't ask you about okay. dates. Okay, we don't ask you to give us specific. I mean, timelines. No, we ask you to reflect on what you have understood in this or that part of the chapter. So rest reassured that um, we're, we're not taking uh, memorizing into consideration while not. Mm. Uh, so it's more about understanding, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I You're appreciate welcome. it, Doctor. You're welcome. Um, okay, so uh, can can we uh, can we have somebody else? Uh, okay, so uh, we're all uh, agreed on the fact that the, the Roman sources were negative when it comes to uh, communicating uh, things about the character of Kilibatra. And we're saying that uh, Kiliobatra uh, was portrayed in a negative way for uh, uh, explicit reasons. The fact that the Romans, the Roman culture is a, a male-dominated culture where women were given very little um, appreciation. Women were not very much appreciated at the time. Uh, so it's only natural that people would, uh, uh, you know, look at Ka uh, I mean, Kilobatra with apprehension and suspicion. Um, when they get to know that their Roman leaders and generals are entangled in uh, a relationship or relationships with the lady, they get nervous because she is a woman and because she is also uh, foreign and they have xenophobic attitudes towards uh, foreigners. If you're xenophobic, it means that you hate foreigners. Okay, so Kilobatra happens to be a foreigner, happens to be a woman, um, happens to be a, a, you know, from a country that is uh, competing with their empire. Egypt, uh, have, I mean, has always been a, a competitor when it comes to empires and empire building and everything. So they had every reason, every negative reason, to uh, um, give us the stereotypical images that we have of Kilobatra as um, um, a, what? a witch, as uh, you know, the uh, disruptor of peaceful households, um, an enchanter or an, an enchantress, um, as somebody who comes from that part of the world where they look at with a, uh, apprehension and also the suspicion. And they have a great deal of, uh, you know, uh, negative perceptions uh, about it. The fact that uh, at one point they would say that the ancient uh, or Egyptians at the time uh, were uh, worshippers of uh, animals and crocodiles and things like that. And they all, the, the fact that they also worship their own um, kings and queens 
uh, that will contribute to the overall negative image and, uh, and the overall negative assessment of the Romans on the different levels, whether we're talking about educated people like historians and uh, literary figures or uh, even on, on the, the grassroots level among uh, people. People in the street would have the self same uh, opinions and impressions about Egypt and about Egyptians and about their queen, Kiribati. Um, okay. Uh, why, uh, the question remains, why uh, are the Roman sources uh, having such an overwhelming influence on later sources and on, on later assessments of Kiribati? And if you still remember, we said that um, the Egyptian sources are not as many if you compare them to, of course, the uh, Roman sources. And uh, they are not also as rich, and they are all material things. Um, if you still remember, we said that perhaps, um, I mean, Egyptians were not. Their system of education was perhaps different from that of the Romans. The Romans have a system of writing. The Romans perhaps knew about uh, having books that they could write in. Um, ancient Egyptians have, it doesn't mean that ancient Egyptians didn't have, um, you know, uh, writing or um, they were not educated. Um, or, or anything for that matter. It's, it's only that perhaps their way of expressing uh, things were, was different. Um, uh, how did they express their allegiance and their love for their um, king or queen? Uh, they would do that through perhaps uh, sculpting, uh, through statues, um, you know, uh, through uh, painting stuff on the walls of temples. Um, so the idea of writing, um, writing in books w was not as popular in ancient uh, Egypt, Egypt uh, during the reign of Cleopatra as it was uh, in the Roman Empire. That would be one reason why the uh, Roman sources uh, are more popular and more uh, perhaps uh, uh, used. Um, and also um, because of the, the, the fact that, I mean, books, I mean, the Roman sources are all written in books. So uh, it's only, uh, and our system of education, our modern system of education is also focused on the idea of the book. Um, books are re re readily available, but they are smaller in size if you compare them to the other ways of expression like statues in ancient Egypt. Uh, you write a book, in order to make a statement, in order to say something about this or that person, in order to perhaps narrate history and historical events. Um, okay, and this is again, this is similar to our own modern experience. What did the ancient Egyptians uh, did? They built, in order to make a statement, in order to say something that they would uh, paint, they would uh, make a statue, and of course, statue and the material, as you can see, is, uh, um, you know, um, big. The material is even more expensive. So uh, you, you're trying to perhaps glorify your queen or your king, and um, um, you don't have in your culture this idea of writing a book or writing on paper. But uh, and instead, you would uh, make a statue, you would uh, 
uh, write uh, or paint on the walls. Of course, um, painting on the wall would require that you have a wall, and a wall would be uh, building a wall would be expensive. Uh, painting on the wall would be equally expensive. Building a statue uh, is also equally expensive. So that's why you don't have so many uh, sources. You have uh, you don't have those traditional sources. So you you would have a book and you write in it. So this is the Romans, but the Egyptians have their own way of. Uh, um, you know, communicating their love to their queen, that would only happen, like I said, through statues, through paintings, uh, through walls, right? And these are, um, I mean, the material uh, is obviously expensive, so you don't have so many people who, um, you know, record uh, different occasions that would glorify uh, Kiribatra and the other uh, uh, people in, in, at the time. Um, again, why would we um, have the Roman sources also perhaps more popular than those um, Egyptian sources? It would be the idea, like I said, if you have a book, the book is accessible is easy um, you can have it as your own property uh, and you can read it whenever and whatever but uh, if uh, if we're talking about a statue or um, a paintings on, on a wall in, in the Egyptian case that would require you to I mean you, you cannot have a statue back home and then you read whatever uh, is engraved on the statue in in, in praise uh, of Kiribatra and the other uh, rulers. You cannot have that. It's not easy. You have to commute. You have to go to the statue uh, um, in order to uh, kind of read the, uh, whatever is engraved on it. You need to look at the statue also and look at how beautiful it is and come up with ideas uh, about uh, what uh, or who the statue is uh, about. Uh, with books, also in terms of understanding, if you have a book, you can understand. If you know how to read and write, you understand it very easily. But with statues and with uh, coins and with uh, uh, paintings on, on a wall or uh, within a temple, you need to also have uh, because this is these are uh, artistic things. You need to have this ability to appreciate art. So with reading, you just read and understand. But uh, if you have something that is uh, sculpted or painted, you uh, unless you know uh, how to appreciate art, you wouldn't understand the messages uh, that are. Uh, given through a statue or through a, a temple. Okay, so this is the problem. Not so many people would understand and appreciate whatever is made uh, uh, in the name of Cleopatra. But lots of people, if you uh, you only need to be able to read and write so that you can read a book, uh, a history book. Uh, or a poem or a speech written by the Romans. And that would be one big reason why Roman sources were all over the place uh, and uh, were used widely when it comes to the character of Cleopatra. Again, there were uh, Egyptian sources, but those Egyptian sources are very special and they are not so many because uh, the system in Egypt uh, at the time was different. You're trying to make a statement. You try. You don't have this uh, uh, book facility. So how can you praise and talk very nicely about Kiribatra and the others? You would make a statue. You would uh, paint on on the walls, and this is like I said, is very expensive, and and, and this is 
can be interpreted in a nice way by the selected few. Okay. Um, any any anything else about Kilobatra? Yeah, uh, Hanin, Hanin Faiq, go ahead. Yes, uh, uh, Doctor, they, no one mentioned how she chose to die. Uh, I mean, we can we cannot forget how she chose. Yeah, yeah, we cannot, of course. Yeah. Why? why? Why can't we forget how she died? Okay, because I respect, uh, respect her because she didn't make the Romans insult or uh, despise from mm. Allah or uh, even to disfavor her before she, uh, she did. Yeah. She... That's... She... Yeah. Okay, you can comment. Yeah, that, that's an interesting point that Hanin is bringing up. The, the, the death of Cleopatra and how noble her death uh, is the fact that even uh, Romans acknowledged the fact that she died in a noble way. So, uh, because the alternative was very ugly, the alternative would be that she would be taken away from Egypt and she would go to Rome and they would uh, uh, make a parade where she is humiliated and scorned uh, in, in the streets of Rome. So in order to avoid this fate, wh what did she do? She uh, uh, committed suicide. And how did she commit suicide? By having uh, a snake uh, prepared and ready so that uh, she got uh, stung and she died once and for all. Right? Uh, her death, yeah, yeah, that's right. Their, their death, her death is also very uh, noble, and uh, if anything, it is an indication that she she is also um, she's a calculating um, lady, and nothing uh, obviously escapes her attention. Okay. Uh, actually, in a Plutarch, uh, Plutarch and uh, Horace, uh, they they uh, talk uh, they write about uh, her her uh, her her. her her way, though. Her, yeah. her, sorry, I'm sorry. Yes. Her death, uh, and they admire the way um, of her death. Why she, mm. she did in her royal robes. Yes, uh, in that's the Plutarch account, they uh, they present this uh, this point that uh, yeah. she uh, she she killed herself while he uh, like wearing her royal robes. Yeah, that's uh, like uh, I said. This is a noble kind of death. And this is, why is it noble? Because the Romans in their culture used to do that. If uh, a Roman soldier is in a battle and he knows that he will uh, be captured, uh, um, he never surrenders. He uh, takes his own sword and kills uh, himself. So the, the, the death is, is very Roman. I mean, Cleopatra's death is very Roman, and that would be one reason why they liked uh, her death. They they said, yeah, in spite of everything, in spite of the fact that she was bad and everything, she died in a noble manner. Yes. Yeah, and she uh, used to hang on with her bride. She used to what? Uh, hang on with her bride. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's correct. Hanin, where are you from? What branch are you in? I'm from Riyadh. From Riyadh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Uh, do you think we have covered everything when it comes to Cleopatra and the chapter on Cleopatra? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, shall we call it a day and, and stop on this note and with this item? Uh, yes.
It was okay. all clear. Thank you. Okay, so what I want you to do for next time, I would like you to, uh, I'll share the links with you. The, the links on Cleopatra, I think we have perhaps more than one, one class on Cleopatra. I would like you to watch the, the class. We have two classes uh, together with this class, right? I would like you to go through them um, and I'll, um, I'll share with you the, the dates for uh, the other revision classes on, on the group. So um, what I want you to do for now would be uh, that you go, uh, you press the link and watch the videos on Kiribatra and this video because this, uh, this class is also, this revision class is being recorded. Uh, so that we can um, talk very briefly on Kiribatra and then move on to uh, something else. So um, we're not meeting tomorrow, but perhaps on, on Thursday. Okay, and I'll try to keep it uh, to um, late uh, hours. I mean, not early in the morning because you guys are busy. Perhaps at, uh, we can always start at four or at six. Okay, I'll share information about the time of the class on the WhatsApp group, inshallah. Thank you so much for coming. It has been very interesting. Your ideas and thoughts are very interesting too. Thank you so much. And I look forward to meeting you again on Thursday, inshallah. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much, Doctor.